Hey guys, so it's time for another beer review, and I am actually quite excited to be reviewing Anchor Steam beer today, uh, because, I'm mostly because I'm pretty fascinated by its history. So, Anchor Steam beer was first produced in California at the turn of the 19th century, so it's associated with the time of the gold rush when people came here to look for gold and brewed beer, and uh, this beer was first brewed in 1896, though the first modern bottling was in 1971, and uh, this one has 4.9% alcohol by volume, and uh, it was brewed right here in San Francisco. So part of why I'm pretty excited to be talking about this is because I've personally gone on a tour uh, at Anchor Steam, and it's completely and totally awesome because not only do you get to see basically almost every step of the process, um, but it's free with, um, let's see, a reservation ahead of time. So uh, they usually give tours in groups of like 20 or less, 15 or less, something like that. But uh, as long as you have a reservation, it's basically free. And at the end of the tour, they let you sample every type of beer they have uh, in-house that day. For, all for free, of course. So it's pretty awesome. And um, so yes, so let's talk about this specific beer. So it is also known as California Common Beer. And um, so steam beer is a type of lager. And one of its special, or one of the reasons why it's special is because it is uh, fermented at higher temperature than most lagers, and the reason for that is associated with the fact that when people first came to California, uh, there was basically nothing here, and so in order to cool down the beer, they actually had to use uh, the natural cool air blowing off the Pacific Ocean to cool down the beer, and so uh, as a result, you would see steam or whatever um, rising from the uh, the beer as it cooled down. And and it's also interesting to note that, let's see, according to Wikipedia, while steam beer is considered a specialty microbrew style of beer today, it was originally a cheap beer made for blue-collar workers. So I guess in a way you could say that uh, it was beer for the 99% or whatever. But um, so I wanted to talk about the brewery briefly. So um, let's see, the brewery was originally founded in, again, uh, 1896. And um, for a while in the 50s and 60s, it actually almost closed down. But um, Frederick Maytag bought it in 1965 and saved it from closure. And since then, I guess eventually it's been doing quite well. Uh, let's see. So they actually have uh, seven uh, year-round beers and four seasonal beers. And uh, I forget exactly which ones I, for I got to taste uh, that day when I went on the tour, but I know for sure that my favorite was definitely Breckles Brown. Um, that one was kind of sweet, but not the disgusting sugary kind of sweet. It was very, how do you say, it's like, um, it tasted very, like, there was like a freshness about it, and it wasn't overly bitter or anything like that, so that one was definitely my favorite. And um, apparently, it's also a distillery, so not only do they make beers, but they also make uh, single malt rye whiskey and gin. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get to taste that that day, but uh, still, I was really quite surprised that they also made that. Um, so I guess there's more information in the links below in the description, and um, for now, we'll just try this out.
Alright, so as you can see or might be able to see, there's actually a fair amount of bubbles rising up, so nice carbonation there. And um, it's actually surprisingly darker in color than I thought it would be. Uh, it's it's a relatively amber color, though not quite. But uh, I like that in the description they don't tell you what you're supposed to taste. So, alright, let's see what it's like. So I would say it smells pretty rich, um, no skunkiness, and according to the website they don't use any rice, corn, or any other adjuncts, so let's see how it tastes. So I don't know if this is sort of redundant, but it tastes very clean, like very kind of pure, I guess, sort of. It's like, I think this would be sort of your ideal kind of beer for, well, with anything really. Um, it goes great with food because it's not too overpowering, but there's enough beerness to it that, it ta that actually tastes like something. Uh, for example, as opposed to um, Bex or something. And so, let's see, the website says that it has a rich and distinctive flavor. Um, kind of, I, I could see that. Um, I don't, I guess I personally don't drink enough beer to know whether or not it's actually distinctive, but it's definitely rich without being overbearing. And, um, I would also recommend this beer for first-time beer drinkers, simply because, again, it's, it's not too strong, but it actually tastes like something, and, uh, So, I did get a request from someone uh, that said that in my beer reviews, what he would like to know is the price of the beer. And so, all the beers that I review, I actually get from work. So, every Friday we have beer hour. And so, you know, free beer, yay. And so, I usually grab one from there and then, uh, you know, review it at home here with you guys. And so, the main problem with that is. There are times when I have absolutely no idea how much it costs because I have no idea where they got them or even in general uh, how much it is because they actually get a pretty wide variety of beer sometimes. So uh, it basically rotates every Friday. So different labs bring in different beers during different weeks and so it's really hard to know what I'm going to be getting at any time or how much it is or anything like that. However, um, I'll try my best to either look it up in the future for you guys, or uh, sometimes if they have it at Costco, then I, I can usually figure it out from there. So I guess I'll just give it, I'll be giving you guys the lowest price that I can find um, without tax, because tax is different everywhere. But um, so for Anchor, for this beer in particular, at Costco, I'm pretty sure it's probably cheapest there, maybe not, but anyway. At Costco, it costs $23 for a 24-pack. And so, I don't know, I mean, in terms of how expensive or cheap something is, that is completely relative, because, like, even if you get a bottle of soda from the vending machine or something, it's, I mean, nowadays it's already like $1.25 or something for a 16-ounce bottle. And so in this case, that's actually, this beer is a 12-ounce bottle, but it's like, technically it's like, well, without tax and stuff, it's like less than a dollar. And so, you know, if you're going to compare like beer and soda, you know, it's like the quality of what you're drinking, then, I mean, I sort of feel like it's not that expensive. And plus, if you compare it to how much you would pay for it, like at a bar or something, um, I feel like it's relatively reasonably priced. And so... um so yeah, I'd, I'd say, you know, I mean, and if you're too, well, 
<laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, um, you guys should try it for yourself if you're able to get it, and I guess I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. So guys, sorry, um, I forgot to mention a couple things that I wanted to mention. First of all, I wanted to show you the details on the bottle, or the label. So here you have, you know, an anchor, and then on the side you have some hops, and then on the other side you have some barley, which I thought was pretty cool. And the other couple things I wanted to mention was that, uh, before I mentioned that steam beer refers to either the beer brewed back in the 1800s, or this modern, like, California common beer or whatever. However, Anchor Steam just launched a uh, new thing called California Lager, and that is basically a recreation of the beer brewed back in the 1800s. So they're using the same methods and the same, like, recipe and stuff as um, they did in the 1870s. So they're actually coming out with it this year. I'm not sure if they're already selling it or um, or it's going to come out in a couple of months, but yeah, that's pretty exciting. So I guess, um, I don't know, people in California should be on the lookout for it because I think for now it's only available in California. And also, uh, the current brewery is located on Potrero Hill. However, they're actually, uh, they've announced a major expansion plan at Pier 48, and that is basically right next to AT&T Park, which is uh, the ballpark we have here. And uh, the construction is supposed to begin late next year, and if this is successful and everything goes to plan, then they'll be able to expand their capacity from the current 180 thousand barrels to 680,000 barrels of uh, production, annual production. And so, I don't know, you guys, just be on the lookout for that. Alright, thanks for watching again.